Hey everybody, Johnny Car Rants here. I'd hoped I'd never have to make a video like this, but Yu-Gi-Oh has gone god dang woke. <sighs> They're raiding our freaking genders. Good afternoon, Jank enthusiasts. I'm MBT, and this is 10 Minute Testing. I'm back from London and now must resume the work. Sisyphus style, I attempt weekly to examine every archetype bolstered by Photon Hypernova, a set with more legacy support than Link Vrain's pack. That said, I believe we are finally reaching the end of this Herculean task with a deck that's near and dear to my editor's heart. Presenting Generator. So here's the list graciously provided by Dyer. As always, I'll give you a background about the archetype, a little bit of a discussion about what I hope the deck can do, and of course, the card by card. But first, this video is sponsored by Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck. Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck is the number one place to go if you need a pack simulator, a card database, or want to read a wealth of strategy articles. They also post breakdowns and lists from every major TCG and Master Duel tournament, including the Master Circuit Series. Give them a look at www.ygopro. D -E -C -K .com. With that, let's get into Generator. Generator is an archetype that really fills the phantasm spiral sized hole in my heart. Its field spell, Generator Boss Stage, is pretty much the entire game plan. When your opponent adds a card from their deck to their hand, it triggers an effect to summon a generator from your deck, and when a generator is summoned, it summons as many tokens as possible. Each 9-star Generator Boss has an extremely powerful effect that can be used by tributing generator tokens, ranging from reborns to targeted banishes to negation. Unfortunately, this deck's been left in the dust by two larger metagame developments. Firstly, the death of VFD, which left level 9 spam variants without a suitable end boss, and secondly, the proliferation of decks without choke points. Monsters like Har and Utgarda are great in formats with must-resolve setup monsters, but they can't keep up against a field of Sprite and Cash Tira. Until now! Generator received two new pieces of support in Photon Hypernova. A new boss, Vala, and a new... boss in the colloquial sense, Levitin. The former resolves Generator's most pervasive problem, drawing its bosses. While Vala is in your hand, you can discard a Generator card from your hand to special summon it, then special summon a Generator from your graveyard. The latter gives you something worth making with Vala. It decreases your opponent's monster's attack by a thousand, and is a quick contag into any non-fairy Generator Xyz, then attach material from the field or graveyard to itself as material, up to the number it had when it tributed. This 101 on steroids only gets better when you realize Jormungandr has a similar effect, meaning you're likely attaching most, if not all, of your opponent's field to your monster, all while having a negate up via Har. So with that, let's get into the card by card. First up, the Hand Traps, 3 Ash, 3 Valor, and 3 Nibiru. After that, the Generators, 3 Lopter, all of these monsters you can only control one of at any given time. This one gives Generator monsters you control a thousand attack and defense during your opponent's turn only, critical to protecting your tokens. And then during the main phase, contribute a Generator monster to summon a level 9 Generator monster with a different name from your deck. Next up, we have Vala, Sadir of the Generator bosses. If this card's in your hand or graveyard, you can send a Generator card from your hand to the graveyard, special summon this card, but banish it when it leaves the field. If it's special summoned, you can special summon a Generator monster from your hand or grave, except herself. Three Mardell, which on normally special summon adds a generator card or a plant monster from your deck to your hand. To Utgarda, which for the low, low cost of two tokens or two rock monsters, I suppose, can banish an opponent's card. Har does the same but for spellcasters and can negate. And also, if your opponent adds a card from the deck to the hand, except during the draw phase, you can make them send a monster from their hand or field to the graveyard. Hala, for one token, can reborn from your graveyard. And one Diviner of the Herald. This card does a lot for the archetype. It can send a Vala to the graveyard and post board. You can go into something like a Trias Hierarchica, so in a pinch, you can send all of your tokens to the graveyard to summon the Trios Hierarchica and prevent your opponent from evenly matching you for your life savings. After that, we've got three copies of Generator Boss Stage. Once per turn, if a card is added from the main deck to your opponent's hand, except during the damage step, special summon a Generator Monster from your deck in defense position. That's a soft once per turn. This one's a hard. If you special summon a Generator Monster during your opponent's turn, special summon as many Generator Tokens as possible in attack position, but destroy them during the end phase. We're playing three copies of Generator Boss Quest because you aim to have a lot of bosses in hand over the course of your turn. This card's fantastic. Allows you to reveal a Generator Monster in your hand, add up to two Generator Spell Traps with different names from your deck to your hand except boss quest and then put the revealed card on the bottom of your deck three copies of pot of prosperity one harpy's feather duster three generator boss fight which activates a generator field spell directly from your deck or graveyard then your opponent draws a card triggering it and three copies of infinite impermanence in the extra we've got two copies of elder entity and tis two copies of mirror logic aggregator which you can actually make three copies of levetin generator boss of shadows you can only control one of this monster and monsters your opponent controls lose a thousand attack and defense as a quick you can 
if this Xyz summon card is special summon a non-fairy generator Xyz monster from your extra deck, then attach cards from any field or graveyard to that special summoned card as material up to the number of materials this card had on the field. Three Jormungandr, generator boss of eternity, you can only control one of this monster. Its attack and defense become a thousand times its number of materials, and as a quick, you can detach material from this card. Each player draws a card, which of course will trigger your boss stage. Then each player that drew attaches one card from their hand or field to this card. Finally, we've got some links, one copy of Underworld Goddess of the Closed World, Nightmares Unicorn and Phoenix, a Sprint, and a Mascarena in the side. We've got three copies of Gamsiel, three copies of Dark Hole, three copies of Cosmic Cyclone, three Evenly Match, and three Summon Limit. So with that, let's jump into the games. Our first match is up against Salamangrate. What does our opponent think it is? 2020? Hold up, let me just check the top four for Lima. Huh. Well, all right, our opponent's going first. Let's see what they can accomplish. They're going to begin with Flame Buffalo. Afterwards, they're going to activate Salaman Great Circle in order to grab from deck to hand a copy of Spinny before making a Bailing, triggering the effect of the Bailings and the Parallel Exceed and the Flame Buffalo in sequence. After that, they're going to get a copy of the Field Spell from their deck to their hand. They'll draw a couple of cards and then trigger the effect of the Parallel Exceed as well, getting the third one from deck. They'll go Gazelle here. Gazelle is going to send a copy of Rage. They're going to go Baguska into Salaman Great Spinny. Then they will overlay for a copy of Mirage Stallio. They'll activate Mirage Stallio. It's negated because of Baguska, and they'll go into Sunlight Wolf a couple of times before. For, well, down comes the rock. Feeling good from this position, it seems pretty unlikely we're going to lose. We'll draw for turn and... Yeah, that's an okay one. We're going to begin with a copy of Lopter. We're going to activate the effect of the Lopter to go into a copy of Mardell. Mardell is going to add from deck to hand, you guessed it, a copy of Vala. We're going to activate the effect of the Vala, summoning herself, then use her effect on field, and run into a ghost spell. Maybe I shouldn't have gone for the OTK. Okay, we'll just go for the new Xyz monster here. Wipe the field, set one card, and pass back to our opponent with two hand traps and grip. I'm still feeling good. They rip a circle off the top of the deck. They're going to go ahead and grab a copy of Jack Jaguar, then normal summon a flame buffalo. We'll activate the effect of Leviton to go into Jormungandr, eat the entire field, and then they'll proceed to end phase. This is a hop skip and a jump to lethal. Let's just switch our monster to attack position and oh, let's activate its effect as well. We'll go for the graveyard effect of Vala, activate the effect of the Vala in order to bring back Har and then proceed to battle and get in for well over lethal. Our second match is up against Naturia Runic. And by that, I mean our second match is up against Evenly Matched. This game showcases the deck's one major critical weakness. Because it ends on tokens, it really does not have a lot of game against the card that is currently highlighted. We're going to begin with a copy of Vala, Reborning a Har, then we're going to activate the effect of Pot of Prosperity, finding off the top. Okay, there's the boss stage, so we can stop now. I said we can stop now. Thank you. All right. We're going to go ahead and go for the Leviton, activate boss stage, set one card, and pass back to our opponent with a hand trap and grip. We're going to activate boss stage on draw. That's going to get us a har. We'll activate the effect of the boss stage in order to get four tokens to our side of the field, and things are looking really good. They're going to go for it. Quacky Ducky. We'll activate the effect of har, and unfortunately, that puts us uh, absolutely dead to evenly matched. They'll go Camellus here. They're going to send a copy of Sacred Tree. They'll activate the effect of the Sacred Tree for blessing. We'll har here. They'll send the Camellus from field, proceed to the battle phase, and... Yep, that's, uh, that's all she wrote. So it's time for game three, and you know what that means, a best of three versus meta. Our opponent's playing Cash Tira, and our hand does not look fantastic. Sure, Lopter plus Generator Boss Quest is fine, but our opponent's got a couple of hand traps that are really going to complicate things. We're going to begin with a copy of Lopter. We're going to use its effect in order to go into a Mardell. We'll activate Mardell, and our opponent will chain Ghost Mourner and Moonlit Chill. Oh, God. Okay, let's fire off the Boss Quest. There's Ash Blossom, and things are not looking good. We'll pass back to our opponent. They're going to go for a Pot of Prosperity. I don't Ash this because I don't know the contents of their hand. They're going to have to whiff every Every single card for us to even have a chance this game. But they're playing Cash Tira, so that's like an 80% chance to whiff. They're going to go for Scareclaw Cash Tira, banishing a Papias, and then they'll activate the other Atheosis. We'll go ahead and Ash that one, and uh, that's, uh, that's the end of their turn. What a fun format. They're going to go for Birth afterwards. We draw for turn, and we should be able to clean this up, actually. We're going to go for Lopter here. We'll activate the effect of the Lopter in order to go into a Vala. We'll activate Vala's effect to bring back this copy of Mardell. What do you know? Let's trigger the Mardell. We'll go ahead and grab a Boss Quest, and then we'll fire the Boss Quest, tuck back this Utgarda, and then go ahead and, I guess, get our Graveyard Banished by Birth. Uh, we'll go into a Leviton. We'll activate that to eat the entire field. Go into a Jorman Gander. Jorman is an extender here because we have the Boss Stage. We can use its effect in order to take a card from our opponent's hand and trigger the Boss Stage to go for a Har. We'll set one card and pass back to our opponent. Then in draw phase, we'll trigger the boss stage again to get an Atgarda and three tokens to our side of the field. They have a Kaiju, but that is not going to be sufficient. As a result, we will go for Jormungandr and force them to equip anyway. They're going to go to battle phase, and I freak out for about a half second before I realize we have negation anyway. We draw for turn, and let's just switch our monsters to attack position and wrap this one up. 22, 3k, and 4 ought to do it. So it's time for game two, and oh my god, depending on how this Pot of Desires pans out, I think this is the nine lock. Our opponent actually likes not to go for it, using the Wraith so to get a copy of Fenrir from deck to hand, and I can't even blame them. The Appointer of the Red Lotus and the Magic Deflector probably means we lose anyway, no reason to overextend. They're going to go for the Atheosis here for a copy of Unicorn. They're going to Unicorn to grab a Birth from deck to hand, then they'll fire off the Rise Heart and then trigger the effect of the Rise Heart after going to Shangri-Ira. That's going to go for a Big Bang. They will banish the top three of our deck, trigger the effect of the Shangri-Ira, and then cycle that copy of Fenrir back to their side of the board. 
board. They'll go for the Wraith Stoth here in order to protect their own Shangri Iran, get a monster into the graveyard, then they'll make a Rise Heart, set Birth, and activate Pot of Desires, which didn't, you know, banishes a card face down. They're going to go for Birth here, bringing back Unicorn and making Diablosis. They're going to go Diablosis to banish a card and trigger the effect of the Shangri Era and the Arise Heart and the Diablosis in a new chain to banish more and trigger the effect of the Shangri Era again at point of resolution in a chain with the Arise Heart, which of course is a mandatory effect. They're going to set three and pass as soon as we take our first action. We are going to lose access to all of our spell trap zones. They're going to appoint you here to take the Dark Hole, which would otherwise have clearly been our first action. They're going to go for the Arise Heart here and we'll fire off the Pot of Prosperity. And we're going to find off the top. I think we actually have to go for Lopter here and hope they just let it resolve. Even then, I don't know if we win. They're going to go Arise Heart and Shangri Era in sequence along with the Ablosis. We're down to 13 cards in deck. Uh, they're going to go ahead and trigger the effect of Shangri Era again, and we are out of back row. We're going to normal summon a Lopter, but uh, I, I don't even think this does it. Uh, uh, let's just go to game three. So it's time for that all imported game three and. Wow, both of our hands are just fantastic. But we're going first. We're going to begin with a copy of Lopter. That Lopter is going to tag out for a Mardell, and the Mardell is going to add from deck to hand a copy of Vala. We'll trigger the effect of the Vala and get ourselves that Mardell in Graveyard using her effect on field to bring back this Lopter before overlaying for a copy of Leviathan. We'll go for the effect of Pot of Prosperity here, finding off the top, I guess, something crazy out of the sideboard, ideally... Or just engine, just all engine. Okay, we'll just take a Vala, I guess. We'll go boss quest in order to get a second copy of boss stage and a boss fight as well. We'll go for the boss stage and then trigger it and draw phase, get ourselves a Har, and then summon three tokens to our side of the field. Feeling really good about this one. Our opponent's going to lead with a copy of Fenrir, then afterwards going to book the Har. That's fine, I suppose. They'll go Fenrir here in order to grab a monster, then Wraith Soth. That'll prompt the Lopter from us. We're going to go into an Utgarda. After resolution, they're going to activate Fenrir. We're going to chain Utgarda using itself as well to banish that sucker. They're going to go for a unicorn afterwards and then activate the effect. They'll go for a Papias targeting the unicorn, but we can use the Levette in here to take the unicorn and cause the Theosis to resolve without effect. They're going to go for Scareclaw Kashtira here, which gets them back this copy of Fenrir. We're going to chain fight in order to grab another copy of stage, then trigger the stage to get Har. And remember, we haven't used the negation yet. We'll go Jormungandr here and then trigger the effect of the Har in order to send. They'll go birth. We will get that birth into the graveyard, which is unbelievable. Then they're going to go for a Rise Heart. They can accomplish a little here by going into a generic seven they're going to choose to make dark armed dark armed can clear the entire field but for this copy of lopter which should still be enough we'll draw for turn and yeah that's probably all she wrote we'll go lopter into mardell we're going to trigger the effect of the mardell that's going to grab us a boss quest we're going to send that to the graveyard for a vala then trigger the effect of the vala for a har who has a lot of attack points we'll go into the battle phase with levitin and then we'll attack directly for 25 then activate her effect in order to make a jormungander we're going to take a card from the graveyard here get in for two then trigger the effect of the Jormungandr to make it a three. We'll trigger the effect of the generator boss stage in the Har as well to get a copy of Hala. Still in battle, we're going to activate the effect of the Hala to cycle back into a copy of Utgarda. Unfortunately, we can't do lethal, but this is a great position to be in. In draw phase, we'll trigger the effect of the boss stage for a Lopter. We'll get a couple tokens for our side of the field. Our opponent has two cards versus our two pieces of interaction. They're going to begin with a copy of Pot of Prosperity, and hey, we've got an Ash Blossom as well. That's going to the graveyard to negate the pot. They'll set one at end phase. We'll activate the effect of the Utgarda to banish it. Hilariously, that triggers the effect of Papias, but uh, it's not going to matter. We draw for turn. Let's just go to battle phase. Lopter, get him. So we're back with the deck and eh, let's do the pros and cons. First, the pros. One, the new Xyz is very powerful. Attaching from field to graveyard without targeting is unprecedented and super strong versus a lot of the field. Two, boss stage applies constant pressure and always demands a response. And three, access to rank nines means you get to do a lot in engine. And the cons. One, it loses to Ash. This is a pretty bad place to be when there's another deck in the format, Branded, that also necessitates Ash main deck. Two, it loses to evenly matched completely. Due to the tokens, Har has to be held for exactly evenly matched or you are going to get punished. There are some ways around it with Trias Hierarchica, but even that requires you to burn all your interaction on something that could be a bluff. And three, it's bricky. You're running nine mandatory level nines. You need to see the field spell, and no matter how many you run, not seeing it loses you the game on the spot. Vala gives bricky your hands away to make some interruption, but she's also a terrible top deck. Overall, the new cards are cool, but this deck can't compete in a format with engine only. Adventure might be a requirement for not drowning in early rounds. Thanks so much for watching. A big shout out to all of my Patreons, but specifically Elena Tincher, Alex Dominguez, Alex Perea, Allison Elliott, Brett Henry, Bizen Queen, Chaotic Meatball. 
Crispy, Da Bears, Dark Master Zork, DJ Elephant, Executive Slifer, John Piet, Jordan Koontz, King Magic Ruler, Night Mari, Lockstone, Luis Hernandez, Materiality, MBT Play Medolce, Mike Carlotti, NH6574, Puffins of Doom, Rose Lapine, Roos Mosquito, Soft Doe, Solar Flare, The Hollow King, Troy Says By Erasure Is Gay, Vincent Storm, Wonder Waffle, Yuki, and Yor. I couldn't have done it without you. Anyway, remember to like and subscribe.